Right, another new fantastic uh, device that's been added with 5.2 is the addition of Compressor Plus, which is just, it really is a great little piece of kit, this. Um, and again, easily integrated into everything because it's a Bitwig device. Uh, everything just kind of works and has just so many ins and outs that you can, different ways you can use it. Um, I want to take a look, brief look at this, but I want to kind of focus on compressing specific areas of the frequency spectrum, uh, how this solves a few problems like compressing kicks and things like that. Right, let's dive in. Right, so first glance, pretty standard looking affair here. Yeah, we've got attack and release, we've got ratio, threshold, and we've got a device input here, which is the sidechain input. So obviously you can sidechain this if you want to do sidechain effects and things like that. Uh, we've also got a sidechain effects input here, so you could do all sorts of things to the sidechain. Uh, let's say, for instance, you wanted to just chain in a little spike. You don't want to get a whole kick in there. What you could do is bring in sort of something like a transient control and actually bring down the sustain of the kick. So you're just getting a little spike, a little trigger signal coming into the compressor to trigger the compressor itself. Uh, you could also use this for filtering. Um, for example, if we don't actually do the device input at all, if we just set up a sidechain effect here, and we can add in an EQ, uh, you can solve the problem that you have with compressing kicks. And this is what I want to look at here in this uh, video. Um, this kind of common problem that you have, let's just turn this one off first. When you start compressing a kick drum, for example, when you kind of get too far into the kick with a threshold, you start losing the energy. Because the thing is that the lower frequencies are taking up most of the room with this kick drum, yeah? And the lower frequencies are getting pulled down because they're the loudest and all that you're left with is the sort of top end stuff. So all I'm doing there is just over compressing. Now what you could do uh, with most traditional compressors is add in this EQ into the sidechain input. So you would, uh, some of them would have a sidechain filter normally. Uh, this one you can just add in whatever you want. So we'll put in this EQ here and take a listen to what happens now as we filter the sidechain. Sorry, it needs to be in this one. So even though we haven't assigned a sidechain input coming in here, it's basically just using the actual track itself uh, as the sidechain. And because we're filtering out the lows, the only part that we are hearing is the high end of the kick. And that's coming in and triggering the compressor. So essentially, it's actually not compressing that low end. We're splitting the two apart. Uh, so that's kind of the traditional way to do it, but uh, Compressor Plus has another trick up its sleeve whereby you can sort of adjust the the volume of um, the signal going in, but per band, and you've got a four band uh, split that you can do that with. If you click on the Maximize button, the Show Expanded View on and off, uh, it'll actually bring up this multi-band view, and you have the lows, low mids, high mids, and highs that you can adjust here. So you could set up your compressor as normal and you'll see the curves. So this is essentially just limiting. And the cool thing is you can see what's happening per band as well. So that's kind of really cutting things off there. We can adjust the attack if you wanted to, but let's keep the attack short. So we're kind of getting really quite a strong compression happening there. Now watch what happens if I play around with this one. We can bring down the intensity of this. And you'll see that actually the threshold for this one goes up. We're just putting less of the low signal into the actual compressor. To the point that we're actually not compressing it at all now. So there we fixed our base problem again. There's not too much of that over compression. Maybe we're compressing too much of the low mids as well. Well, let's say, for example, we want to over compress those, but we want a little bit more of the punch to come through. So we can adjust the timing for this one too. So now we're letting more initially through and then bringing it down by adjusting the timing. Maybe we want to compress this one more with a faster time. With slower time too. And that's your overall threshold. So it's a really nice way to kind of just shape your sound um, 
by adjusting these bands individually. And it's also very quick and easy to do. It's not quite as complex as setting uh, different compressor settings for each different band. It's not a multi-band compressor as such. It's just really easy to dial in this. Uh, there's also some other tricks up its sleeve as well. This uh, timing section here is basically like the compressor um, behavior, let's say. It's not the tone. There's other stuff that you can do for the tone. This is more like how it behaves. So the same way that you would have a tube compressor, it's a little bit more sloppy and a little bit more um, gloopy than something like a VCA compressor. Yeah, you've got a glue compressor here, which is going to adjust the timing. And let's actually just, uh, maybe just reset this again so that you can kind of hear what it's doing without all the multiband stuff. And we should perhaps change up our, I'm just gonna bring in this drum loop here. So that's a vanilla, you can, I'm gonna dial in some fairly extreme compression settings here and just take a listen to the, how it affects the timing. But we can also change up the sort of overall compressor behavior. This is smooth. Over. The glue, you can hear that sort of nice punchiness coming through there, typical glue compressor. You can see it's also not uh, compressing as much in places there now as well. The auto timing as well. Then also, in addition to that, you've got another layer that you can change up the compressor here by changing this to sort of beyond or dual. These actually add in additional controls. So the beyond, for example, you can set up a glue compressor, but with the beyond one that will actually allow you to you can see adjust the knee. And give you some really unique behavior for the compressor there. And then you can also switch this into dual mode, which uh, will give you sort of an OTT kind of vibe to it as well. That's going to give you upward compression at the same time. And then lastly, two other little features I want to just look at here. You've got some actual tone control for this as well. So clear, no coloring. You can switch this to prism, which is sort of a little bit of coloration. Especially if you kind of drive this a little bit harder and the saturate. And then uh, you've also got a makeup gain, super cool. They've added this in to quite a few new plugins. The chain also has a learn makeup gain as well. You just run this for 15 seconds. It works very much like the soft tube ones. It's not consistent. It's not constantly changing the gain. I actually prefer it this way. It makes more sense than an auto gain thing that just is changing all the time. Um, I like this the same way that the soft tube plugins have now as well. You just hit makeup. We'll play this back, hit makeup gain. It'll set it, take it off, and now we can AB. So you can see you're losing the low end there, but the levels are pretty much the same. Works very, very well. And so for instance, this one again, just reduce the intensity of those lows slightly, maybe this one slightly as well. And we'll run the makeup once more. Learns it. And AB. Great job there. Cool. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.